How's it going, monkey fans? Uh, It's been a little while here, but it is September, which means it's time for my annual birthday dragon for my dragon-loving wife. Uh, I kind of had an idea of what I wanted to do coming into this year, a couple weeks ahead of time. Um, For those that don't know, this whole thing started because my wife loves dragons. Uh, She sits at a computer all day for work. So at some point for her birthdays, I started drawing her... Uh, you know, desktop dragons to put on her desktop at work. So she has something more interesting to look at it, I guess. Um, Anyway, the idea kind of evolved. And now I'm thinking about doing some kind of a book eventually uh, based off of this stuff. That's kind of this idea where this dragon species finds a planet, terraforms it, and over many millions of years, they start to speciate and uh, inhabit the different types of environment on the planet. Um, Right now, everything I've done has kind of been very Earth-centric, Earth-focused, but I'm kind of hoping that somewhere down the line, I'll start thinking a little outside the box about some things. But for right now, uh, everything has been based off of Earth environments and Earth animals and things like that. Um, So I kind of had an idea of what I wanted to do this year, I knew I wanted to do like some kind of a savanna type grassland, uh, and I was leaning towards like an elephant for inspiration. But I figured I'd ask my kids uh, just to see if they came up with some other kind of crazy idea that would, you know, pique my interest. And two out of my three kids both said elephants with absolutely zero prompting or uh, any discussion from me about what I was already thinking. So I figured that must be a sign. So I went with elephant. Um, I kind of, I kind of had an idea of what I wanted the head to look like pretty early on. I wanted that crest thing, uh, which is kind of pulled from another one-off illustration I did for the, uh, first page, opening page of my constantly in the works graphic novel, Reverie. Um, it was just some kind of weird long-necked creature and had this crest on it. And I kind of liked that. So I kind of took that, played around with it, put it on this guy. Uh, I knew I wanted tusks. Um, I kind of wasn't sure how I was going to get it to read as elephant, because one of the defining features of an elephant, obviously, is the elephant's trunk. But, you know, if you've got a dragon, it's already got a long, flexible neck. Not a lot of point to having some kind of prehensile appendage coming off the face. Uh, but then I stopped and thought about sort of the uh, Asian dragons, and they kind of have that mustache-like tentacly thing that comes off the nose. So I thought, well, why don't I just take that, and I'll adapt it and make those kind of like a double trunk. Um, so I was, I was kind of happy with that idea. I liked the way it came out. Um, working on the body, I knew the general body shape I wanted. I wanted it to be, you know, kind of big and obviously elephant-like. Uh, But I wasn't sure what I was going to do about the scales. You saw earlier in the video already, I went through a lot of different variations of scale patterns. I was thinking about, you know, well, a rhinoceros is kind of similar and their skin can kind of look plate-like, but it didn't really look right. So I went back and I drew inspiration from crocodile and alligator skin and how they have a lot of uh, different types of scales on the different areas of their body. I don't know if it's related to whether or not that part of their body moves more or needs to be more uh, robust and protected. I don't really know. Um, but it gave me some ideas for how to approach the the scale texture on this guy. Um, I knew I wanted some kind of a, a fan or a sail running along the spine. Um, and I kind of played with that a little bit. Or again, earlier you saw I was kind of doing some different plate shapes and designs, almost like a stegosaurus, was kind of floating around in the back of my head too. But I ended up going with more of a, again, a crocodile or an alligator, how they've got sort of thicker, heavier plates on their backs. So that's what this guy has. Um, I thought about for a little while giving him some almost like vestigial wings, uh, but I couldn't, in my mind, figure out how that was going to work and look right. Uh, and not obscure some of the other composition I had going on. Um, 
as I've talked about many times before, I really love details. Like I obsess about drawing details, details that most viewers probably will never see in any of my work, if anybody even sees any of my work. Um, so at the end, I'm going to post a couple of like close-ups of the head and the body so you can see some of the detail that I spent a lot of t uh, time uh, putting in there. Um, a lot of these, when I do these illustrations for my wife and some other illustrations I do, I like to try to explore different workflows and techniques that I may, might be able to uh, implement in my other work, the other graphic novels and things that I want to do. Um, something I've been doing lately is I've been working up a really uh, detailed line sketch and then I get into like an ink layer and then I do a full black and white render. Um, and in this, this time, something I did that was a little different is after I did the full render of sort of like a generic light source, I added a uh, another pass with a different layer of for sh like directional shadows and directional lighting. Really like the way that worked. I'll implement that elsewhere. Thought about doing a color version of this using gradient maps and stuff, but my wife really likes the black and white. So that's what I stuck with. Anyway, I'm at the end of the video here. Do what the monkey says, and I'll see you next year.